Hi everyone, David here from DavidDumeAudio.com and welcome to this new video series that I want to create which is basically um, a, a playlist I want to create of a bunch of sound design that I've created before, uh, projects I've worked on and basically deconstruct whatever sounds I've created and show you guys layer by layer what I've used, what I recorded, different sound sources, different techniques that I might have used, uh, different plugins uh, that I uh, used and yeah, basically go over my thought process, how I how I did what I did and hopefully it helps you guys out. You guys can learn something new, some different techniques, maybe get some ideas from my videos and then also for me, you know, I can always go back and rewatch them as well. So that, that kind of um, good for uh, everyone and hopefully we can comment and share and and uh, yeah, kind of share ideas and, and improve together. So anyways, without further ado, let's just kind of jump right into this first uh, sound design example that I have ready for you guys here. <clears throat> All right, so this first, um, for this video, I wanted to share, oops, um, a scene that I created, and this is part of a video game, it's called the 3D Game Kit, which you can find on um, unity.com, on the Asset Store, it's a free, downloadable uh, game kit, uh, it's basically, they created it, Unity created it for developers to practice um, developing games and for me i've been using it to implement sound design using wis but um yeah so right now i'm kind of creating sound design and putting sounds in and stuff like that and that's what i'm working on so i've been creating this uh, scene so let's just play it through and then you guys can see what what it looks like All right, so that's it. Um, it's basically what the sound effect is, is this robot um, monster uh, dying. So yeah, why don't we just go through one layer at a time and see um, how I created it. So when I first started out, I was kind of thinking um, I wanted to start with some electrical sound. So if you look at uh, the video without any audio, so if I was gonna mute everything, There you go. So if I'm you to have anything. So yeah, so this is what I was looking at. There's no audio. And maybe you guys can think of what you guys might use or how you guys would start this. But what I was looking at is all this electrical um, zipping around and uh, all the light and stuff like that. So this is what I was looking at. So what I started with was uh, first layer here, which is this one. And I'll show you guys what it sounds like without any plugins on. Right, so what that is, is it's just a bunch of impact sounds. And the way I created this was actually in S layer. So if you don't know what S layer is, I should have it open here. Yeah, uh, this, uh, I just basically imported a whole bunch of impact sound effects. And then I was just playing on my keyboard uh, those sound effects, and this is what I came up with. So I was playing pretty high on the keyboard, that's why they're kind of short and they're higher, higher pitched. Right, and I was kind of trying to make it match the visual, but I kind of did it freestyle, so that's what I did. And now, um, once I had that, then I added some spectral pitch shifting that I have here from Dehumanizer, which added this. So I thought that was cool. It's a lot closer to that kind of electrical gritty sound that I was looking for. And then I just added some auto pan, which just moves the sound around the, the field, the back and right, right and left. So it gives them a, a much more white sound. So that's how I did that that layer here. All right, so the next layer that I created, I basically used that exact same sound and imported it into Groove Agent, which you can see uh, here. So if I take off the, um, the delay and I play it. So this is the sound. The reason it sounds different is because I added some uh, pitch, a pitch envelope. So I made it go down really fast in pitch and then up really fast. So. But if I take that off, you'll see it. it should be the exact same sound. Yeah, the exact same sound. And then I just made it the pitch envelope go down really fast and then up really fast. And then what I did now is I just went on my keyboard again and I just played a whole bunch of notes, a whole bunch of notes and then kind of freestyled it again. And yeah, this is what it sounds like. So I thought it was very crackly and it, it kind of went well with the image there. So that's how I did that one. And then I added some uh, delay just to make it last and give it a tail. All 
right? And now together, this is what I had to start my sound. All right, so it's just the texture and electrical texture that I was going for, and that, that was that. Um, the next thing I created here uh, are the, is the impacts for the, the death of the robot, so kind of the explosion part. And the way I created that, uh, as you can see, I have no insert effects, is basically I just took um, S-Layer, again, imported a whole bunch of Im impacts and explosion sounds until I found one that I liked, uh, randomized a whole bunch of parameters, and then I found something I like, and this is what it was. Right, so that was my first layer to start with. And then I had another layer here. I'll see what that sounds like by on its own. Right, so this is my base uh, boomy layer. And yeah, this is the same thing as the previous layer here, the previous impact layer is basically uh, just S layer, except I was playing really low on the keyboard to get a bass sound. So together it sounds like this. And as you can see here, I kind of uh, delayed the transient just a little bit off the first one, just so they wouldn't line up exactly, just to give it a bit more punch. All right, now this third layer, Let's have a listen to what this is. Uh, let's have it listen together. I think this might have been when the robot's falling. Yeah, so I think I added this layer a bit later when I was working on the metal and I wanted a kind of a basier layer for the metal when the metal fell on the ground. So that's what this impact layer is. Anyway, so that was a basic impact. Because I wanted to uh, accentuate it, uh, the impact even more, what I did is I added kind of a swoosh sound here. And this is actually from a library. I think this is from Boom Library, if I'm not mistaken. It might be also from the GDC free uh, samples. Basically, it's just a flame uh, swoosh. So let's hear that by itself. Yeah, so as you can see, there's no uh, effects or anything. I left it as is. And it basically just to intensify the impact right here. So it sounds like this. All right, it just makes it much more intense, much more impactful. So, so all together now, let's listen to what we have. There you go. All right, so the next thing I wanted to work on was basically I wanted a lot more tension and build up whenever there was the... Um, when the robot's dying here. As you can see, you can see all the energy is coming back into the robot. It looks like he's like getting, gonna explode, but there's all this tension going on. So I wanted to have something like a riser uh, happening. So that's what I did. Uh, I think this is what this layer is. Let's hear it. Oh no, okay. So this is a electro another electrical layer. So the riser is after. So anyways, for this layer, so let's see what I did here. Interesting. So let's see what this sample is, because I'm not even I'm not even sure what it is. Okay. Mm okay. So I added some pitch envelope here. So I'm going to remove that, so we can hear what the file sounds like, the original file. Interesting. So this must have been an Omnisphere patch that I created. And to be honest, I don't even remember how I created it. It sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways, so I created this patch in Omnisphere and then I added some uh, a pitch envelope here. And then I think I played, I must have played some lower notes. Yeah, so I played really far down on my keyboard. It kind of gives it a warble and an electrical texture as well. So let's hear it with this here all together. Yeah, so I thought it kind of went well together, especially with that warble sound. It kind of added some, I don't know, some bass, obviously, and then some, I don't know, electrical or robotic feel to it. I don't know. I thought it was cool. All right, so yeah, the next layer here is the riser I was talking about. So I wanted to create something to build tension as the robot was going to break and explode. Um, so this is what I created. 
And the way I did that, if I show you guys an Omnisphere here, it's basically a one uh, patch thing. I use a saw square bright. And if you look at my modulation matrix here, everything's basically modulated to envelope one. So if I look at envelope one here, just for, for you guys, yeah, it's just a riser over six bars, six and a half bars, and that's all it is. So if you look at all my modulation, it's modulating the pitch, the synth shape, the unison depth, unison detune, the wave shaper depth, uh, oh, no, not the wave shaper depth, the amplitude and the ring mod frequency. So basically what I was doing is, first thing I wanted, because I knew it was going to be a riser, obviously the pitch has to go up. So I, I mapped the pitch to the envelope. And after that, I started playing around with different parameters. So I was playing around with the shape just manually. So I would I would play a, and hold a note. And as the pitch was going up, I would play with the shape and see if it sounded good. And if it did, then I would map, pitch, uh, I would map the shape, for example, to the, the uh, envelope number one. So if I look here, uh, modulation number one. Uh, and I did the same thing with different different parameters like the unison. So I did I turned that on, played with the depth. I thought it sounded good. So you know that I did I I played with it manually. And then if once I realized yeah I like it, that's what I want. Then I I mapped it to modulation one. I did the same thing with the wave shaper here, and same thing with the ring modulator here. So I was just playing manually, and then if it's good, it gets mapped. And that's basically how I created that. And then after that, I think I played around with the amp a bit just to get the release right. That's pretty much it. So let me see what is the LFO number one for the wave shaper depth. So LFO number one, I made it a random for the wave shaper depth here is probably, what is that here? Must be this. I'm actually not sure what it is. Anyways, it's some parameter here, probably this one. And it's moving it around randomly so it sounds... I think that's what's making it sound, giving it that gritty sound, that electric kind of sound. So anyways, but yeah, so that's how I created this patch. Pretty simple. Um, one one modulation envelope here, and then basically assign a bunch of parameters to it so that it rises and it sounds, it builds in tension. So let's hear it one more time. Good. Then the next thing I want to do is create a downer. So basically is having a... One trick or sound design technique or trick that I like to use, especially when I'm building tension and stuff like that, is to have both a, a riser, but also have a downer at the same time. So you have this uh, contrary motion. It's a very musical thing to do, but it also works with sound design like this. So you have contrary motion going on, and it, it just adds to the tension. So let's hear what this sounds like on its own. All right, let's hear it again. So how did I create that? Very similar to the first, um, to the riser that I created. So I have, so if I look at my matrix here, I have, yeah, everything's on mod one except for one, which is the LFO, which is panning it probably randomly, if I double check. Yeah, modulation was just randomly panning the sound left to right. But yeah, similar to the first, the, to the riser, everything's panned to, mo uh, to mod envelope one. So if we look here, it's just a down. Instead of going up, now everything's going down. Uh, exact same uh, technique here. So uh, pitch is going down, the hard sync's going down, wave shaper depth, that's going down uh, over time. The cutoff is going down over time, unison depth, uh, detune, and amplitude. Right? And I found a filter here, the Rich and Moogie one. So uh, yeah, not too much to look into here. Uh, it's very similar technique to the riser. Right. So now once I had these two together, what I wanted to do now is I kind of wanted them to play off of each other. So what I did is I added a track, track spacer, which is basically I, I use this to duck one signal from the other. So I wanted to start with the downer. And as you can see, if I zoom in, you can see the downer starts first and then the riser comes in. So I want I wanted to start with the downer. And then as, as the rider, riser comes in, I wanted to take over from the downer and until the downer basically disappeared. So if we listen to what that sounds like, if I take off track spacer. It sounds like this. Which sounds okay. Yeah, uh, It sounds fine. It gets a bit crowded though, I found, uh, especially in the lower end. It's just too many frequencies going on and the other textures kind of get lost. So I wanted to add uh, this. Let's hear what this sounds like now. Maybe I should play it with other stuff so it makes a bit more sense. Right, so um, anyways, that's why I added this track spacer here, especially because I wanted the riser to really uh, kind of pop out uh, as it was getting near the end, just to add that extra intensity. So that, that was my thought here. 
And then finally, near the end of me creating all of this, I'll just skip over so we see, so we hear it, is I just added some electrical uh, layers. So this, again, I think is from the GDC free pack that they give out every year. Uh, yeah, it must be from that. And I basically, I think it's the same. No, one's Arc 2, the other is Electricity uh, 7. So two different samples, and I kind of blended them together to make it sound like this. Right, so just a bit of fade in, fade out on both. And I think I just removed a bit of the lows probably, yeah, because I did not want any bass because the bass was already taken care of in the riser and downer. So all together now, riser, downer, and my initial patches that I created up here. So let's hear what that sounds like. And again. So that's how I created that. And next, we'll go into the impacts. So I kind of worked on the metal aspects separately. So as you can see here, this is the robot kind of falling. And I really wanted to try to record my own sound and my own source material for this, which is what I did. So let's just kind of go through it one by one here. So this is basically me recording my oven door. <laughs> Sounds like that. And then I, of course, I pitched it down with the format here, as you can see here. So I just pitched it down 15 on the format. And this is another take I did of the same thing. And I pitched it down as well, 21. So let's hear that. And I think, yeah, another sample. So I took three, I did three door closes and this was what it sounds like. And I did the exact same thing for this one, down 24, so a bit lower. So all very similar, so if I play them together, it sounds like this. Right, so kind of spacing them apart because I want a bigger, a more defined impact. If they're too close together, it just sounds like a one uh, big impact and it, it kind of loses its edge, I guess. So I thought, I thought that was more effective. So anyways, let's keep it going here. Uh, down here I played, what is this? Uh, yeah, so this is a garbage can that I was just bouncing around on the floor. Or I just hit down on the floor. All I did here was I pitched it down a bit and I brought some harmonics, some lower harmonics in with manipulator. Sounds like that. Uh, what do I have here? This is a music stand. I was, again, just hitting around on the floor. And same idea here. I just pitched it down. So if I play it by itself. Yeah, pitched it down. By the way, if you hear the reverb, it's because I grouped this whole metal into a reverb. So that's why you're hearing a, a bit of reverb, but I'll, sh I'll show you guys that af afterwards. After that, I added some, uh, what is this, metal ring. So this is probably from a sound pack, so let's hear it. Nope, maybe not. <laughs> I'm not sure where this comes from, but anyways, I just pitched it down. Might have been from GDC. So that's what that is. So if I play it all together up to now, let's hear what, what we got. That's what we have. All right, next, I have this. I'm not sure what this is. This was probably uh, an impact sound from, again, S-Layer that I probably uh, manipulated a bit or just did added some sort of effect to it. It sounds like this. I just thought, I think I thought it had kind of that metallic quality, so I wanted it in the sound as a bass layer. So that's why I put it there. Another oven door close, which is actually the same sample as up here. I just I just placed it at a different place so it could have a different purpose. And I pitched it differently, so it was a bit higher pitched, this one. There you go. And then this is a weapon swing sound. Probably, again, the weapon swing to just intensify uh, the impact of the metal. Uh, probably into this impact. So let's hear it together. So that's what I was going for. And it looks like it, this one impacts as well. So it's very minor, but if you play it without it, this is what it sounds like. Right? But as soon as you add that swing, it adds just that bit of uh, a little extra touch of intensity. Right? So anyways, that's why I put it in there. And then finally, this which is just, I think is, 
I think this layer was just me dropping some metal bars on the ground, which I just left as is, I think. So all together now. So that's how I created that first impact sound. So there's a, more metal sounds here. And these I put in, uh, as you can see earlier in the shot, because as you can, if you look at the, uh, the video, you'll see the arm and the legs of the robot fall before the rest of the body falls down. So I was basically using the same samples as I did for the metal one. I just pitched everything down as the same samples and just spaced them out. As you can see, it's just all manipulator. So I'm just pitch shifting things down. That's about it for this one. So nothing too special there. All right, let's see what this, this layer here is. All right, so yeah, I think this layer was for uh, the ending. You can see some shots of something <laughs> leaving the robot. I think that's what this is. Yeah, so the way I created that, so if I take off what I have, the inserts I have here, you can hear it's a, a noise. It's from Omnisphere, so let's open it up here. Yeah, so it's in just a noise, uh, noise here, and then I inserted something. So there's delay, and then I think I I I randomize. Let's see what I randomize. Some sort of parameter with the orb here. Mm, oh, maybe not. I thought I did. Let's see how this works. Hmm. Anyways, it's just a radio delay uh, I added. Let's see what else we got going here. So I'm modulating the amplitude. And yeah, I think that's about it. I'm not sure how I created this patch exactly. I think this is is manipulate is uh, affecting the. Um, I think it was affecting the, um, the panning. That's what I was doing with that layer here. So. Yeah. Anyways, I'll leave that there. All right, and now if we move on, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So. Yeah, that's everything all together. So if I do all the impacts together now, I'll work with that and the metal. Here we go. Let's hear what that sounds like. This is just the impact and metal. All right, so once again. There you go. And as I mentioned before, the metal, I'm sending these into uh, a reverse. So let's see if I can open that up which is, let's see where it is, right here, my metal group. So anything that was metal, I was routing into here. And on here, I just had uh, ROM reverb. I put out 24%, uh, decay down 1.5 seconds. And I basically for this, I just uh, brought down the mix till I thought it was good. Basically, I, actually, I think I started with the delay. I brought it down to 1.5 until I thought it was a good uh, reverb sound. And then I, I played with the mix until it sounded uh, kind of right. And then manipulator, I, br I brought the mix down uh, too. So all the metal, um, all the metal sounds. I guess I thought were a bit too high. So I brought, it, I pitched it down even more to uh, down too. And that's about it for that. So let's hear everything together once again. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope you guys found that useful and you guys enjoy that. Hopefully you've learned something or maybe picked up some a few ideas uh, from what I'm doing here. And um, yeah, that's it. And uh, if you guys have any questions or, or anything, leave it in the comments uh, below and uh, I uh, always do my best to get to them. And uh, if not, I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.